Welcome back to the channel and let's do a quick review of this very good looking knife. Uh, it's Kangshan. <laughs> As you can imagine, I somehow follow this brand. I see what they're doing. I see they have sometimes very good offers for us. Uh, and let's, uh, let's review it kind of like the what I see uh, since I bought it recently on Amazon. And now it is why I bought it. It's about 50% off uh, from MSRP. Uh, MSRP is 250. They sell it now for $120. Interesting knife. Um, obviously, it competes with the Shun uh, series of those, the very similar pattern knife uh, with um, Damascus style cladding and uh, Japanese steel core. Um, for for this knife as well. This one comes with the very interesting handle, uh, kind of similar uh, from Kanshan point of view. It's similar to uh, Thomas Keller series series of knives, but instead of a single uh, pin, it comes with a three pins and a and the middle one is a mosaic. Good looking knife comes with the wooden sheath uh, with a little bit of magnets, um, walnut. Good good option if you want to store it in the. Uh, um, in a drawer somewhere comes in a quite nice box as you can see comes Han, uh, with this little uh, information about it let's do a review i've cooked with this knife and um, i'll tell you what i like about the, kni the knife and uh, i'll tell you what i don't like and don't understand about this knife there are a few things which concern me so first of all from uh, construction, what it is, they say it's uh, X7 steel. What it is, nobody knows except Kans Khan. It's their proprietary steel, as they say. I, was, I found one article also originating from Kans Khan about it, and they say it's better than VG10. And VG10 being the uh, knives, uh, well, one of the most common uh, steels in uh, uh, Shun production lines and many other uh, Japanese knives. So, for example, some other makers make pocket knives with the VG10 steel. Uh, it's it's good. I mean, VG10 is good. And if X7 is better, well, we only can uh, <laughs> can be happy that it's better. Um, it is a full uh, forced construction, as you can see. We have a real bolster angled, similar to other series. Uh, so front bolster, rear bolster, pretty thick tank in there. Um, knife is straight. Execution quality is very nice. Uh, very little imperfections here on the spine to the bolster transition, but fit, fit and finish on the handle is uh, quite nice. Um, the blade itself, um, let's put it this way, it, it the, the edge created quite well everywhere, the tip is fine, um, knife is very sharp out of the box, shaving sharp, tomato test sharp. There's a little bit of imperfections at the heel of the blade. I don't know if you will be able to see it through the camera, but it looks like like whoever was sharpening it kind of like finished <laughs> a little bit early, <laughs> and they should they should have made the edge all the way through uh, towards the hill, and nope, it just like curves up, and that I will come back to the hill in a moment. Uh, but other than that, I don't see any specific issues with the knife. It is a very, very good quality knife. Very thin behind the edge, uh, tapers down quite well. Um, let's say if you like the shape, if you like the style, if you believe that X7 steel is better than VG10, go for it, half price, okay? Now let's talk what I don't like about the knife. First of all, I don't understand overall branding and positioning of this knife. And what I mean by that, uh, in all the other knives which you've seen, <laughs> maybe online or if you've seen on my channel, Kanshan puts a lot of information here, puts here, 
Kanshan in English and, and like this, uh, maybe serious, steel type, hardness, something plus minus. On this knife, we see pretty much nothing on the box, just a Kanshan branded box, no beautiful function, nothing. We see nothing like, even like on if you go into website, you will see that it has a different stamps here and there. Here have nothing on the website, there's a lot. And that confuses me. Is it this knife made for Chinese market and then they just sell the remaining pieces here on the US market for half the price and they will reintroduce the line down the road? I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't think so. Uh, that I don't think that this knife was all ever been sold for 250 on a Chinese market. I just don't believe it. So very strange. Maybe new portion, new whatever, new version of this knife is coming uh, to us soon with a different market. Maybe not. Maybe it's, that's my best guess. Second thing. <laughs> <laughs> on the website, if you look at this knife, if you look at the picture, if you look at those markings in the picture closely, it will tell VG10 steel. Interesting, right? And if you look at the uh, all of the descriptions of this specific X7 steel, over there it says... 60 HRC over there it says 61 HRC similar for VG10 it says somewhere it says 60 HRC somewhere it says 61 HRC uh, for the hardness so it looks like to me that Kans Han is kind of trying to play the game here about this specific steel it what kind of steel is better than VG10 but not yet a different steel, powered steel, or whatever. I don't know. Probably it's the same VG10. It's just the way they did it. Or maybe it is some other steel which they austen. Or maybe if we're talking about China, it can be X9, X10, X11, uh, MOV, or whatever, whatever the designations are. There's a bunch of steels which are quite good in quality, not yet powder steels, which they can say better than Vigitel, VG10. So I don't like this game. Even if it's VG10, it's a good steel. Even if it is AUS10, it can be a good steel. If it's Even if it's 9CR MOV, if it's 10CR MOV, or whatever the uh, Chinese designations for the relatively good high carbon steel, stainless, with a good edge retention, I'm, I'm happy. I'll be happy. Just don't play the... Kanshan, if you're looking <laughs> into this video, don't play this game with us. Nowadays, if you say it's our proprietary steel, only we can do it, that's why it's so good, it just doesn't work. Uh, I don't believe it. A lot of knife people don't believe it. Chefs, they don't care, to be honest. <laughs> so, that's what I don't like about overall the way this knife is sold and presented to us. Um, and then finally, what I don't like about this knife is, um, let's say not finally, there are a few things from a, from a design point of view. Um, first of all, I told you already, and I kind of like made a mistake myself. I shouldn't have been buying this knife at all. Um, so I don't like uh, when the knife general geometry like curves like this. I like when the handle is straight or have a little bit like bulge up. I like it better. With this knife, it's not that bad. It's not super curved like Thomas Keller. I can work with this knife. It's actually quite all right to hold the knife and, and so on. It's not a big deal, not a problem. It, I don't have uh, a lot of uh, problems with my fingers hit, hitting the cutting board. Um, the overall shape of a knife is interesting. Uh, let's actually quickly compare it to uh, more traditional, traditional shapes of a knife. So, for example, this would be Wusthof Crafter, very typical 
shape of a uh, European style chef knife. It's it's a chef knife, by the way. So you can see that Kanshan has a little bit uh, less of a belly, more uh, straight type of. Um, okay, let's put it let's less curvature, less belly on the, on the blade, but spine is still straight. Actually, spine works for moving vegetables just fine. And for example, like your German style blade will have way, way, way more curvature in this area, way more belly, but more straight line here, uh, more belly here. So we see that it's the curve of this specific knife is kind of closer to Santoku's or closer to um, other Japanese style knives, which are more for uh, like chopping rather than rocking moves. But with this one, still rocking moves work quite well. So that's another thing to consider when working with this knife, that it's a little bit different from geometry point of view to what you may be used to. So make your own decision when you uh, buy this knife. Um, another little thing which I kind of don't like about this knife is this thing. So, on one hand it is good, uh, let's put those knives aside for a moment. On one hand this is good, uh, this is a nice addition to have, it's magnetic, but on the other hand, um, if you're still gonna put it in a drawer and do too much of a movement of a knife, it's not gonna protect your edge very well. It's still gonna bang a little. If you see, not as bad as some plastic ones, which have no retention, no magnets. This one will still preserve the edge if being stored like this, but leather sheath, leather case like this will preserve the blade way better because there will be like no movement because of that friction. And also the, uh, uh, the inserts here, that's what kind of gets to the edge and will never dull it. The wood, may dull your edge a little bit. So that's why, for example, for the knives, uh, I make those things myself. This is the one which I make for this knife. And you see it's a perfect fit. It doesn't move anywhere. Uh, I can even hold it like this. There's no clip, nothing, I don't need them. But for the storage of a knife, it is the most, the best thing, uh, those leather type of things, or your uh, edge protectors, which you can buy here and there. And we'll talk about them in a different video. So that's another thing um, to, to know, even if I like the general idea and the general quality of this thing, and I think it works, it's still not the best thing in the world. And then finally, <laughs> Either this specific knife, which I'm holding uh, here in my <laughs> arms, or the whole series by design, they have a very, very strange, super straight heel, this portion of the blade. And what it makes, um, I'll, I'll show it to you. When you work with this knife like this, when you do rocking moves, this knife stops very hard here. There's no curvature. It almost feels like a tiny bit of recurve in this area. Or maybe it's just this heel was not sharpened well enough to remove this little extra piece of the uh, edge at the end, just because that's not what it was supposed to be. Th that's why this knife which kind of stops like very hard like this. And I don't have like a positive feelings that I did cut through what I wanted to with this portion. And I love to cut with this portion. That's pretty much most my main thing, what I do when I chop my veggies or some whatever I'm doing. I usually use those rocking moves. I less use moves like this or push, no, push cuts. I use push cuts and actually, yes, I do want the push cuts also to be very, very firm and straight to the board. I want to be absolutely sure that I did cut through everything here. Uh, I, again, I can't demonstrate it through the camera through this review here. I almost have a feeling that it's not cutting well enough in here. So this is my final um, thought about this knife. Um, in general, I still think uh, if everything bad which I said about this knife is not uh, concern, does not concern you. 
if you still think it's going to be a good one for you, go ahead. For this kind of money, it's a very good competitor to the Shun. It's a very good quality knife from execution point of view. Um, maybe I will even grind a little bit off myself here and it will be absolutely perfect. Who knows? Um, so far, I'm enjoying this knife. Even if I'm <laughs> kind of concerned with this, I, I like to cut with this area of this knife and holds quite well. Um, maybe a little bit heavy, another thing I can say. Maybe a little bit balanced uh, to the rear. Um, but that's all just variety of things which <laughs> are different from a knife. Fingerprint magnet. Or maybe you can see my face through this reflection. <sighs> other than that, enjoy knives, cutting. I enjoy travel, enjoy cooking. Uh, talk to you soon. Bye.